Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. This video is another addition to the miscellaneous series. In this video, we are going to talk about artificial domains. Artificial domains is a specific tool which is used in few of the specific simulations in ComSol. In this video, I am going to introduce with this particular thing which is artificial domain, but I am not going to talk in detail. There will be follow up videos where we will be talking about this specific artificial domain separately. So I have taken two examples from the ComSol application library where they have actually used this artificial domain. So in artificial domain, there are two important things. One is your perfectly matched layer and another is infinite domain element or infinite element domain. So those two things serve some specific task and I will be talking about it. So initially let us go to the perfectly matched layer case. So this is a simulation which is done on scattering on a nanosphere. So you can say it's a scattering problem uh, that solves that simulates scattering over a gold nanoparticle or silver nanoparticle or any say optical scatterer. So in this case they have used an artificial domain under the definition section. So if you right click on the definition section you will be getting this option you can see that is perfectly matched layer. And this perfectly matched layer is coming in relation to the physics they have chosen and that physics is electromagnetic wa magnetic waves in frequency domain. So in this electromagnetic wave, if I just show you the equation, they are basically solving this particular equation. That is the wave equation and in wave equation, you need to define a condition. So what happens basically, suppose you have an emitter. So the wave emits from the surface and it goes in the three dimensional space. If it gets any obstacle, then there could be a reflection, radiation or absorption on this particular barrier and the wave can reflect back. So if you don't allow a wave to reflect back and interfere with the incident or emitting waves, in that cases, you generally use this perfectly matched layer uh, boundary condition. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this perfectly matched layer in detail. I'm working on it. Once I gather the information about that perfectly matched layer in detail, I'll be taking all the equations and everything quantitatively. We'll discuss about perfectly matched layer. But today it is a qualitative discussion that I have discussed like if you need such boundary condition wherein you don't allow any reflection and interference with the original wave, then you do, you create a perfectly matched layer and that perfectly matched layer is basically created outside of the domain of interest. Like for this particular case, the smaller one is the scatterer and this particular one is the space on top of the scatterer. So you can imagine in a in a three dimensional space, you have a scatterer at the middle and that three dimensional space you are considering to look at the scattering wave. Now away from this zone, you are also defining another zone where you are saying there will be no interference from this zone. There will be no reflectance and all. So this particular zone is defined as perfectly matched layer. If I just go here, you can see. So they have defined this as perfectly matched layer. And there is a specific thickness of this perfectly matched layer and which is related to the physics of the problem. So when I create a video on this nano scatterer, then I'll talk about this in detail. So that was about perfectly matched layer. Now let me go to the another option under artificial domains. Suppose this particular problem they are solving for inductor 3D coil. So herein they have actually taken two physics. One is magnetic field. So in the magnetic field they are, they are solving this equation 
I will also be creating videos on magnetic field where I will be talking about those equations, physical significance, uh, significance of these equations. Uh, but today I am not going in detail. So anyway, they are basically taking magnetic fields and the electric, electrical circuit. So those two physics were necessary. Now under these two physics, suppose you sometimes come across boundary conditions like the potential at infinite it should be zero. So those kind of physical boundary conditions we generally come across in our physics and when we are basically solving for a particular differential equation. So if you have such conditions where your boundary condition says if the, the dependent variable should be zero at an infinite position but when you do a CFD simulation your geometry is a finite domain but you want to incorporate that infinite boundary condition. So in those cases they basically use this infinite element domain. So in this case also you can see the outer domain is taken as infinite element domain. I will not, I am not going into the details of the physics but as I have mentioned I will be creating follow up videos wherein I will be discussing in more detail. But again I am telling this particular zones, those artificial zones are basically taken away from the zone of interest because if you see uh, the zone of interest is the inner one where they have a space and in between they have a inductor, they have a inductor coil. So in this zone of interest they are basically solving the main physics that is magnetic field and the electrical circuit is taken as a global case that's why there is no uh, domain for this electrical circuit. Uh, so the domain of interest is this inner domain and the artificial domain is taken outside of the zone of interest. So today I wanted to share this qualitative and basic and fundamental information. I hope at least I could able to give some information that may be useful for your simulations. If my videos are helping you then I request you to subscribe to our channel and share these videos with your peers. Thank you.